Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about this article from Fierce Wireless. And I had just got done talking with a source of mine after this article got released. And it's the article title is T-Mobile's retail store count climbs past Verizon and AT&T. And we kind of had an idea that that would happen with the merger. So Sprint had, you know, they had their own stores and T-Mobile had their stores. Now you combine the both. Of course, you're you're going to end up with more stores than the competition. Now, what what is going to happen with the T-Mobile stores? Do you keep them? Does that make business sense to keep all those stores? Not really. So what my source was saying that I was speaking with in terms of a third party. So the, the all carriers have corporate locations and they have third party locations. The third party locations are not usually directly corporate. So they have to they have to pay like a 60 40 split to be in to, to keep operating. So they have to pay the carriers the corporate side something to keep their store open. Now, with all of these, they pretty much, T-Mobile pretty much gained a ton of stores overnight. So now with all these stores that are open that have been converted from Sprint to T-Mobile, it's taken away foot traffic from the third-party stores because there's like, there's a store half a mile down the street. Some, some areas, it's not even a half a mile. It's a couple of hundred feet. So they're now splitting the profit. So the third parties are not willing to pay, you know, their fair share anymore. They want to renegotiate. They want to pay less. T-Mobile is saying, no, you, if you want to be operational, you got to still pay me that 60, 40 split. The third parties are like, no, nah, we're not willing to pay that. And slowly, but surely these third party stores are starting to close. I've seen it in El Paso. I have, I don't have uh, an idea of, you know, on what kind of rate it's happening on a nationwide basis. But here recently, six, six of the third party locations have closed. I don't know which uh, third party it is. I know there's there's several different ones. Um, I forgot what they're called, but there's several different different individual third party owners that that own these T-Mobile locations. And they're and they're frustrated. According to my source, they're frustrated they're not seeing the same foot traffic anymore, but all the stores are still being held to the same accountability in terms of the monthly sell, sales goals that they have to hit. So that is that is another thing. With the traffic just generally down due to the pandemic, now you, you threw a bunch of other stores into the field where people that live closer to those stores are going to go to those stores. Now you're trying to split profit with everybody. Of course, T-Mobile is going to be fine with everybody going to the corporate location. They make more money that way. They don't with the third parties. They're splitting. They're splitting the pie to begin with. With their corporate-owned stores, they they take in all the money 100%. There's no middleman, except the employee. The employee does make a make a, a decent share of that money, but mostly the third parties. T-Mobile loses more money to the third parties because they have to they have to split the they have to split the profits on the bigger scale. So people have asked me, so what what's going to happen to those stores? You know, not even just the third party stores, but there are a lot of redundant stores that they've now gained from the Sprint merger. And you know, I don't want to be the carrier of bad news, but they're going to close them. They are going to close those redundant stores. The store footprint that they've gained put them past AT&T and Verizon. AT&T and Verizon still serve a much larger customer base and they have less stores. So you know T-Mobile is going to close those stores. I think what happened was I was a part of the, uh, the Radio Shack. I was a part of Radio Shack before they went bankrupt. I was I was a part of that entire scenario and I was a manager so I was a part of the emails with the district manager and then the regional manager and there is there is a thing of the the leases. So I think what happened was the stores that they did keep open, the sprint stores that were converted, I think those had longer leases. So that lease was likely still 3 4 years out. And it's 
it it's likely to cost more money to break the lease than to just keep the store uh, operational. So that's likely why in some malls you're seeing a T-Mobile store and a Sprint store literally right next to each other and they're keeping both locations open because Sprint likely just recently renewed the leases on those stores and it's going to cost T-Mobile a fortune to break those leases. That was the thing with Radio Shack. It would have been, they wanted to reduce the, the store sizes before they even filed for bankruptcy. They wanted to reduce the store sizes drastically, but it just wasn't feasible. It would have been very expensive to break some of those leases where the stores are still still have a three, four, uh, three or four years left on a lease. It would have been too expensive and it wasn't feasible. So they just went ahead and filed for bankruptcy. But what Radio Shack did do, the store leases that ran out, they did not renew them. They just closed those stores. And that's likely what T-Mobile was looking into, that the Sprint stores that were that likely had maybe a year or so left on the lease, they're like, yeah, we'll keep them open. But as soon as that lease is out, we're going to close those stores in, unless it's in a it's in a prime location. Sprint does have stores that is like in a super prime location. So that just makes sense to convert that to a T-Mobile store. But some of those stores are just redundant, just too many. There's just no need for them. There's just no need to have you know two stores within 300 feet it, it it kills profits it takes away money from the from the store reps there they lose commission they have to split their commission to the next store so now the stores are in competition now one store is offering coffee the other store is offering steak so that they're trying to get people in the doors that way so that's just not a good concept so you could look forward to those stores closing which one of the stores it'll be you know, that'll be up to T-Mobile. They're going to look at the P&L numbers, profit and loss. They're going to look at overall performance. How do the store reps perform? And those those reps will likely be let go if they can't, if those positions can't be repurposed at another store. The store employees will likely lose their job, including including the uh, the store manager that, that's running that store. So this merger is, is, is very tricky. It's, it was put out to the public the DOJ as you know as positive as possible but many mergers in the past they've all ended up in a, in a very similar way of what we're seeing now with T-Mobile we knew there would be job losses we knew there would be store closures but people just didn't think it would be this aggressive and on this type of scale and it's very noticeable that this is happening I'm sure the FCC the DOJ they see the news they they, they see articles they know they know that this is happening and they're kind of just sweeping it under the rug but this was bound to happen and now we'll just see what the what the future uh, looks like for T-Mobile it was in my opinion it was kind of a hope situation from the beginning everyone was you know hoping that T-Mobile would add those jobs that they said and everybody's hoping that Dish will enter the as a fourth carrier and be the disruptor None of this was a guarantee from the beginning. Um, I know there's fines out there, but sometimes businesses have just said, you know what, it's a cost of doing business, we'll take the fines. So it's just it's just a tricky scenario. Uh, no matter how you flip it or twist it, I still don't think T-Mobile needs all those stores. They don't serve nearly the amount of customers that Verizon and AT&T do. And remember, they're still... AT&T still has customers beyond wireless. They got TV. They got home internet. They got uh, connected cars. Verizon the same. So both have way more customers to serve, and they have less stores. So there's just there's just literally no need for for these stores. So again, if you are uh, if you have been on the channel, you can go ahead and end this video now. If you are new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe. If you need, uh, if you want to get uh, updated on when these videos come out, the second they drop, notification-wise, and you're new, make sure you hit the notification bell. Also, make sure in the YouTube app that the push notifications is enabled. Also, follow my Twitter. I do post the videos on the Twitter as well, so you have two platforms to push notifications. And this is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.